This video is looking at how to control the beam and position of your fixtures on the Flex S lighting consoles. First of all, you need to turn your lights on. You do this by being in channel mode and pushing up the faders of your lights. You can change the selection manually using the buttons. With all of those selected, we've got our tabs opened along the top. These tabs allow us to control the colour, beam and position of our lights. These particular lights are moving lights, therefore they have the position control. So if I tap the position tab, my encoder wheels change to have to be pan and tilt. So I can tilt them out towards us like that, and I can pan them which moves them left and right like that. Once you have your lights in a position you're happy with, you can store that position as a position palette. To do that, tap the record button, and tap one of the position palettes marked with an asterisk. Your position is then stored. We've also got the option to fan that position. So if you hold the shift key and then dial, for example, the pan encoder, you can actually fan how those lights behave. So for example, you can fan them into the center of your stage or fan them out from the center. Again, when you've set that fanned position to how you like it, you can tap record and save that as a palette as well. Once you have some palettes recorded, you can manually tap these palettes to move your lights. Notice how your lights are snapping when you tap the palettes. You can actually apply a fade time to these positions. To do that, press the Z key and the right encoder wheel is programmer time. If we tap that encoder button, that will turn the programmer time on, and we can then dial that encoder down to set our fade time, for example, three seconds. Once we've set that, go back to your position palettes view, and now when you press your position palettes, your lights will fade to that position over the time you've set. As well as using the encoders, and also the palettes to control your movement of your lights, we've also got the pan and tilt grid. This allows you to manually go in and tap to give locations to your lights. Once you've put them in a location, you're then able to use the encoders to fine adjust it. When you've put your fixtures in a position you're happy with, you can actually apply an effect to that position. Tap the effects tab and it will give you several effects for your currently selected lights. I can now go in and tap one of those, for example, a horizontal line, and my lights will start to move with that effect. There are buttons along the top of the effects window that allow me to offset my lights, so that rather than all doing the same thing, they can be doing different things. Once you've applied an effect, your encoder wheels will change to be speed, size and offset. Various controls where you can change the rate of the effect and change how large a surface your lights may move over. To stop an effect, simply tap the no effect button. As well as position effects, there are also intensity effects that can be great for quickly putting chasers onto your lights. For example, I can go in and put a chaser onto these lights. And then in the same way I offset my position, I can offset them so they start to chase each other. Again, to stop that effect, I can simply go to the top effect palette, which is no effect. All other controls of your light would come under the beam tab. Beam can control things such as gobos for moving profiles, or it can control zoom. These fixtures, for example, have a zoom, which on the encoders, I can dial that zoom in and out. More advanced fixtures have several different controls that come under the beam tab. So to get to those extra controls, just tap the beam tab again to cycle through the different encoder groups. If you set up, for example, a zoom size that you like and you might want to use again, you can store that as a beam shape palette. This is done in exactly the same way we did a position palette. So press record and then tap an empty beam shape palette marked with an asterisk. That zoom is then stored and I can use it later. To learn how to record beams, positions and effects into playbacks, see our later videos.